Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. As many of you know, in the past I've done two videos talking about the newest version of Luminar, Luminar AI, which is due to be released by the end of the year. In those videos, I talked about what I knew about the product. Unfortunately, I have not, to this date, been able to get a pre-release or beta version of the software to trial for myself. But yesterday, I was fortunate to be invited onto a Zoom call with a number of other affiliates where officials from Skylum Software uh, gave us a little more information about Luminar AI. Also, they have a new web page up which gives more information about Luminar AI. I'm going to talk about some of this new information that I learned about the product because, quite frankly, I've been deluged with emails from people asking me about Luminar AI. So I'll tell you more of what I know in this video. Also, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to this webpage so you can check it out. They uh, give a lot of information here. They also have a video you could watch which gives a little more information about Luminar AI. Um, it's still available for pre-order. I'm not sure if my discount code works on the pre-order. I don't think it does. But in the description below the video, I'll also have my discount code and you could give it a try and see if it works. Now, one of the main concerns I had about Luminar AI when I was learning about it, when I you know first did those first two videos, is they're really embracing the AI, right? All right, this artificial intelligence, this so-called like, you know, term that is being thrown around a lot nowadays. Um, to make it super easy and almost automated to process an image. And what bothers me about that is if the software is deciding how to process your image, then pretty much all of our images are gonna start looking alike because we're all gonna process them the same way because the software is telling us that. And secondly, is you lose control, right? Well, what I found out that's really not true. Uh, yes, there is a lot of automation here and it will give you suggestions, but they're just that suggestions. For example, you wanna crop an image, you open up the crop tool. What Luminar AI does apparently is it examines an image and it could tell what a tree is, it could tell what a mountain is, it could tell what a stream is, it could tell what a person is and so on. So it recognizes all these elements that could be in an image and knows where they are in depth, like what's in the foreground, what's in the midground, what's in the background. So what it will do is it will examine the image and then it will give you a suggested crop a number of suggested crops from what I understand actually using compositional rules so that you could easily say oh that is perfect rule of thirds golden ratio whatever you know I like that crop and you could just take it and save you a lot of time but if you don't like any of those you don't have to use them you could override them and just crop it the old way like you want to and it's like that with pretty much all the AI tools for example if you don't like what it's doing or suggesting all the sliders are there and you could just override it and start moving sliders around and process it your way. Also, this whole thing is um, kind of based on templates, right? These are these templates that it comes up. So you load an image in Luminar and uh, examines the scene, sees what's in it. It knows it's a landscape with water. It knows it's a landscape with mountains or it knows it's a landscape with sea. It knows it's a, it's a, it's a street photo. It knows his, you know, it knows what's in the image. It knows there's buildings, and it will come up with a suggestion or a number of suggestions uh, called templates of how you could process it. And you could take one of those templates and you're done. Or you could just take part of the template and then readjust part of the template. Or you could come in and just ignore the templates altogether and process it your way and then create your own template. So then you could just keep creating your own templates when you're processing images. And then eventually when it looks at images and sees what's in it, it will suggest your templates along with their templates, but you'll be able to uh, kind of keep your style or ingrain your style into the software learning. So it will then suggest what, what you want to do basically instead of what they're, you know, suggesting you do. So that um, kind of put my uh, fears at ease that it's, it's still, they're making it very easy for the beginner to come in and just do things very quickly and come up with a really nicely processed image. But then again, the person that really wants to get in there and move around sliders and do things their way, 
They're allowing them to do it. And not only that, they're allowing them to then create templates so that eventually, once they have a lot of templates built up, the software is going to suggest things the way they want to do it. So that's, I thought was pretty cool. So you get total creative control, fewer tutorials, more results. Basically what they're saying here is they want to make the software so easy to use that you don't have to watch a lot of tutorials to learn how to use it, which hurts a person like me who has a lot of tutorials on YouTube. So uh, your story matters, and it says right here, it automates the most common editing task and simplifies complexity so you have more time to tell an engaging story. All right, so good. Now, uh, get assistance and inspiration with templates. This is what I was talking about. You can see there's templates right here. So when you load an image in there, it examines it uh, the, the uh, elements that are in the scene. So it knows buildings are there. It knows the sky is there. It knows it's nighttime, right? It, so it comes up with these suggested templates that you could put on the image. And then you could say you're done. You know what I mean? So you could go very quickly. But then again, as I mentioned, you don't have to take any of these templates. You could take part of one and then readjust part of it. Or you could just readjust the whole thing or adjust the whole thing the way you want to adjust it. So you're in complete control. And you could see that more here. Uh, unlock your you know, creative vision and so on. And we'll go through. And again, I'll have this website linked in the description below this video. Um, what they've done, uh, apparently, now I've heard, yeah, I've, this, I've been involved in three or four Zoom meetings with them about this. And I think one time they said they interviewed 300 photographers and another time they said 200. So I'm not sure where they misspoke. But they've interviewed a lot of photographers to see how they process their images. And here's some of the photographers they've interviewed. Unfortunately, they didn't interview me. And I feel slighted, but that's okay. But you can see they interviewed all these photographers. These are some of them. And get how they process images. And that's how they come up with these templates, I guess. And how they come up with cropping and different things like that. Uh, these AI things. So uh, then you get give the magic touch for people in portraits. Now here's the portrait part. And you can see that it has these AI features. Body AI, where it will slim a body. Iris AI. With Iris AI, you could add catch lights to an eye. You could change the color of the eye. You could brighten the eye. You could add sparkle to the eye. Face AI, which was already in Luminar 4, but they've enhanced that even more. Skin AI, which was in uh, Luminar 4, is in Luminar 4. They've enhanced that more. Accent AI for lighting and things like that. And Bokeh AI, which I'm actually kind of excited for because you may want to isolate your subject. Uh, maybe you're outside taking a portrait. You want to isolate your subject from the background, but you just don't have, you can't afford a f1.2 lens or f1.4 lens, or you just don't happen to have one with you. So, or maybe it's very bright out and you can't open up that wide. You just can't go to 1.2. Uh, so you have to stop down to, let's say, f4. Well, because of this AI technology and it examines the image and it knows where the person is and knows where the background is, it could add realistic bokeh automatically um, with this bokeh AI. So that's pretty interesting. So it has these samples here, and you can see this image here. I really like this uh, this processing here because I like to brighten faces. So that's something I like here. Then we have this image here, and I believe that's that accent AI where they add lighting uh, to the image. And you can see how they brightened her eyes and whatnot there. And this image here, uh, brightened her face, brightened her eyes, brightened her teeth. They kind of slimmed her face too. I don't like the body in uh, slim. I, and the, I don't care for that personally, but teach his own. Uh, here, I like this processing a lot. And it said made with Luminar in four minutes. Um, you know, this one I think said made with Luminar in a minute, 30 seconds. See, they're trying to show you that you could do this stuff very quickly. Made with Luminar in three minutes. There's the slim the body. I don't care for that as much. Um, I like the processing overall. I just don't like the slimming of the body. Made with Luminar in one minute, 30 seconds. So pretty cool. Now, if you're a landscape photographer, they have these, um, these AI features for you. Uh, atmosphere AI, where you add realistic atmospheric effects with 3D depth, fog, mist, haze, stream, drizzle, uh, steam, I should say, not stream, with atmosphere AI. Create a magical mood without masks and layers. And that's um, something, someone asked me this question. Actually, more than one person asked me this question, and I really wasn't sure of the answer until... Uh, I had these meetings uh, with the officials at Skylum. They've eliminated layers. 
Now, I'm not sure how it's going to work, but there's still masks, even though it says without mask. So there's still masks. And the way they explained it, for example, if you have an image with more than one person in it and you want to uh, use face AI on just one of the people, you could use the masks so you're just affecting one of the people in the group of people uh, with the, the uh, AI. So they said that their brushes and whatnot and their tools are a lot smarter. So you don't need layers anymore. Now, I'm not sure how that works, but that is going to be one of the first things I investigate if I'm lucky enough to get a pre-release copy of the software. And if I'm able to share that information with you, I will as soon as I can. So I'm not sure how it's not using layers. Um, anymore, but it does use masks. So masks are still there. So you could see these atmospheric effects. Um, Structure AI, of course, was there in the past uh, in Luminar 4. Sky AI, of course, was there in um, Luminar 4. Color Harmony looks pretty cool. Move beyond saturation and vibrance. Take complete control over color depth and refine color for balance. The perfect finishing touch. So I'm interested to see how that works because I really like working with color in my images. Super contrast, add detail, I'm, sh I'm sorry, adding detail brings new depth to a photo. Precisely adjust tone with six controls spanning highlights, midtones, and shadows. So that was there, I think, in Luminar 4. They might have renamed it and refined it or changed it slightly with super contrast, now called that. Uh, mood, bring color to life with our mood tool. Experiment with new color palettes that transform the style and motion of your image. So that's pretty cool, too. Um, so it Great composition. It's talking about uh, golden rules of composition for cropping. Uh, I mentioned that already. And yes, it's that easy. So again, in the description below this video, um, I'll have a link to this webpage. You could check it out. Also, I just want to point out, go to the bottom and look at the tech specs. Um, they said that they're not supporting Windows 7 or Windows 8. So you have to have Windows 10 for this to work, or of course, Mac OS um, from 10.13.6 or higher. So um, if you're a Windows user and you don't have Windows 10, don't buy it. It's not going to work. Also, a very important, they pointed out the memory. You need at least 8 gigabytes as RAM, as the guy from Skylum said, to turn the lights on. That's the minimum. It's not going to work with less than 8 gigabytes of RAM, but 16 gigabytes of RAM is recommended, at least 16. It will run a lot better. So apparently it will run with eight gigabytes of RAM, but it's not gonna run very well. You should have at least 16, preferably even more. So the RAM is very important. Um, one of the affiliates that were was at the meeting last, yesterday asked if the Windows and Mac versions were equivalent to one another, because many of you may know that I've, like I know, because I did my demos and my videos demonstrating how to use various features of Luminar 4 on a Mac, a lot of Windows users say, that's not available in Windows. It's not, it doesn't work. It's not here. That feature isn't here. They claim they're, they'll be equivalent. There are some platform limitations, meaning Windows in general can't do something that the Mac OS can do or vice versa, and that can't be avoided. There's just you know a, a platform limitation. Uh, but beyond those platform limitations, uh, they, the uh, software should be equivalent to one another. Now, uh, they do have a 30-day money-back guarantee, and they uh, said that even if you pre-order it, even though it's not going to be available to the end of the year, that 30 days doesn't start until the software is actually released. So uh, it doesn't start from the moment you pre-order it. So you do have a full 30 days to evaluate it and make sure that it runs properly on your system. And that's important. I know a lot of people have problems with Luminar 4 uh, running slow and crashing and um, the tools not working fast, you know, like um, erasers and things like that being really sluggish. Uh, but from what I understand, they really sped up all the tools in this version and they work a lot, lot faster. And they're content aware tool too, from what I understand. Um, so um, definitely check out the check, uh, tech specs before you pre-order it. Make sure that it will run on your system. And again, I'll have a link to this web page in the description below this video. Make sure you watch the video that they offer here and see if it says anything I didn't. And uh, that's it. As soon as I find out more info and I'm able to share it, I definitely will. Uh, and um, thank you. 
everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.